My name's Addison. I'm from Louisiana. I got here about six years ago, back in 2015. And when I got here, Dr. Yan had no less than a dozen projects already funded, ready to go. So I pretty much hit the ground running. And one of the first things we did, we went out to a grower's field down in Cogswell, North Dakota, which is about an hour and a half southwest of Fargo. Real sandy soil, about 90% sand, 8% silt, 2% clay. Nematodes love it. And we, we went down there, looked at his potato field, cut open a couple of tubers. He was growing milva, was the cultivar variety. And sure enough, these brown, necrotic, quirky lesions, ring-like structures on the inside of the, of the flesh. And I'm like, hey, that looks like quirky ring spot disease. And after I Googled it, I figured it out, you know? And uh, he's like, all right, how do I stop this from happening? And I'm like, that's a great question. So we put our feelers out there and talked to a bunch of different companies and we had a lot of bites. Because the thing is, there's not a lot of chemicals that are available right now that only target the nematode pests that cause the disease. We have a lot of chemicals that kill a lot of beneficial microorganisms, the micro, micro fauna that live in the soil and promote soil health. So a lot of companies are trying to find that kind of middle ground where we can kill things that are causing problems and not cause a lot of extra collateral damage. So the way this disease works is it's caused by tobacco rattle virus. The tobacco rattle virus is vectored or transmitted, like Dr. Jan said, by stubby root nematode. So it travels from, from place to place. It can get stuck in your shoes. So wash your shoes after you leave the field, please. Thank you. And, uh, and yeah. With those quirky lesions in there, it's not that it causes a lot of yield reductions, a lot of weight reductions. The problem is that it's quality reductions. Because there's a lot of companies, if you try and sell your potatoes to McDonald's at top dollar, you know, they're going to cut into it and they're going to say, hey, there's stuff in there. And they'll reject the whole, the whole truck. Then you got to chop them up and sell them for Idaho spuds for pennies on the dollar, you know? Not good. So, we did a bunch of tests. And we wanted to test this against what's called the industry standard. Now, the industry standard is a chemical called Vidate. Oxamil is the active ingredient. This stuff is an acetylcholine esterase inhibitor, which is a neurotransmitter required for muscle flexation. So if you breathe it in, your diaphragm will seize up and you will suffocate. It's bad stuff. So as you can see in this uh, little flyer that we made here, Right there in the middle, we got Russ and myself wearing our full protective equipment, full PPE, in the middle of the summer. It's exfoliating, to say the least. And we got our full, we got our half mask on. We got gloves, two gloves up to our elbows, boots, Tyvek suit, the whole, the whole kit and caboodle, because you do not want to touch this stuff. And we tested it against a whole bunch of chemicals that we got from the companies, like Dr. Jan Sa said, Mavento Serenade, which is Bacillus subtilis, which is actually a biological control agent, uh, Magistine, another biological, and Villain Prime. Then, right below our, our PPE picture, you can see the symptoms right there, those potato tubers with the, quirks, the quirky ring spot on it. Then underneath that, we got this nice, beautiful graph that I made in Microsoft PowerPoint. On the left side, you got your percentages from zero up to about 45. The yellow, you got incidence, and the green, you got severity. This is the disease ratings I do at the end of the trial every year. And then I did uh, Tukey's HSD to divide it to see uh, what the differences are. And anything that's not sharing a common letter is significantly different from one another. Okay. Now, as you're looking across these graphs here, tell me, what has the lowest disease incidence? Which combination of chemicals? It's quiz time. Anybody? The second one, right? Vite 8 times 3. You apply a lot of it on a pretty high concentration. You apply it often. And you get pretty good control of the symptoms. But that's the thing that we're trying to replace. Because that is the industry standard. And it is just a blast to apply. So. Every year we've done this experiment with funding from Bayer Crop Science, and we're super grateful for that, as well as from a few other companies, uh, what, M M Marine Bioinnovation, uh, VASF, and a few others across the years. And uh, we're still working on it, still trying to find a solution. Next thing I want to tell you all is that, guys, right now, the greenhouse at NDSU is beautiful. 
I got three foot tall potato, potato plants that are deep green color. They're just starting to flower. And I got 40 different cultivars there too. I had everything, I got your Burbanks, I got reds, I got yellows, all different kinds of experimental cultivars, and they're gorgeous. And what we're trying to do is trying to find out which exactly which one of these potatoes are the best cultivars that the nematodes like the most, which ones they reproduce the best on, also which ones that they reproduce the least on. That's our target. So it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of good work. Uh, also on the right side in the green box, you got a picture of lesion nematode on the right and stubby root nematode right there in the middle. Then you got some foliar symptoms on the leaves right there, little yellow streaks right on the leaves, uh, inter intravenal chlorotic uh, lesions. And uh, you won't see a lot of foliar symptoms. It's mostly in the tuber. So, and you won't know that it's nematodes until you call us and you come get some soil.